Welcome to Faith and Freedom. For the next few minutes, we hope to inform, inspire, and encourage you as we discuss the legal victories and challenges to your fundamental freedoms and religious liberties. Faith and Freedom comes to you from Liberty Council, a civil liberties education and legal defense organization. Join us now as Matt Staber, the President and General Counsel of Liberty Council, explains the latest legal issues all across this country in the courtrooms of America. Liberty Council is winning the battle for your constitutional freedoms. Hawaii becomes the first state to stop chamber prayers at the beginning of their legislative sessions. I'm Matt Staver, founder and chairman of Liberty Council and dean of Liberty University School of Law. Joining me is Matt Barber, director of cultural affairs for Liberty Council and associate dean for the law school. Matt, uh, the Senate in Hawaii has now voted to end the chamber prayers that have been consistent in America in the United States Congress and in every state from the beginning of this country. It has been consistent with who we are and as a result of a complaint from uh, somebody with the ACLU they've decided that they are just going to stop prayers. The first state in the country to do so. Yeah, it's a sad commentary and it, it shows you the uh, level of success that anti-Christian groups like the American Civil Liberties Union, People for the American Way, Americans United for Separation of Church and State, uh, the success that they've had with their disinformation campaign, uh, with the uh, Mimi that they've created, this separation of church and state Mimi, that is the, the, a phrase that is nowhere to be found in the United States Constitution, that they have actually uh, really bullied uh, the uh, Hawaii Senate it into uh, doing away with something that they have done since Hawaii first became a state and something that all states have done uh, since the inception of the United States of America. You know, if you go back to the very first time where all this prayer began, it was during the Constitution debates where after the revolution they gathered together in Philadelphia to talk about what kind of form of government we're going to have. They could not agree on it people were beginning to leave. Benjamin Franklin stood up and then said, listen, we've met here before when we were in the revolution, when our lives were in danger, and we asked God for intervention in our life, in in our affairs, and God heard those prayers. Now do we think that we no longer need him, and therefore he implored that they begin with prayer. So they began uh, a three-day prayer session Then they came back and they continued their discussion of the Constitution, and the unity came to that group. And finally, the Constitution, a few weeks later, was ultimately agreed upon. That's how America was born. And then when America's, when the Constitution was accepted by the 13 states, and the first Congress got together, the first act of that Congress was to vote to authorize each session to begin with prayer and to pay that person from the federal treasury as a paid chaplain. That has been very consistent from the very beginning. And the United States Supreme Court in the Marsh versus Chambers case said, if the first Congress authorized prayer, and that's the same Congress that authorized the First Amendment, how could it be unconstitutional? It just doesn't make sense. It's obviously constitutional. So that has been upheld by the U.S. Supreme Court. But here, unfortunately, you got the Attorney General in Hawaii advised the Senate that continuing prayers would be subject to a constitutional challenge. Absolutely ridiculous. And as a result, they uh, end up abolishing prayer. Well, Benjamin Franklin, uh, in his appeal to pray at the the original Constitutional Convention, he said, to that kind uh, of providence, we owe this happy opportunity of consulting in peace on the means of establishing our future national felicity. And have we now forgotten that powerful friend? I have lived, sir, a long time, and the longer I live, the more uh, convincing proofs I see of this truth that God governs in the affairs of men. He went on and on with a, with a beautiful uh, uh, monologue and and encouraged uh, our founders to pray. Our nation is literally built on prayer. The United States Congress still opens every session of Congress with prayer. Uh, they um, it, and yet the state of Hawaii now is is doing away with that. It just defies logic, reason, history, public policy, and law. It really does. So uh, this is a, a sad day in Hawaii. I think that the people in Hawaii ought to rise up and uh, really put a line in the sand and ask their representatives to restore prayer. It certainly is constitutional. Liberty Council would defend 
this uh, state and any other against these bogus challenges. In fact, there was a lawsuit filed against a uh, similar situation in another state, and it was uh, the Indiana House of Representatives there had their prayer beginning every session since the beginning of Indiana's history, and there the ACLU filed a lawsuit to try to stop it. Liberty Council filed a friend of the court brief or an amicus brief. That particular process, that history was upheld, and the ACLU lost that case, and that was just in 2008, so that's fairly recent. So these things can be won, and they should be won, to allow the ACLU to literally rewrite our history and to erase our heritage is a tragedy. Well, um, as we've stated here before, Roger Baldwin, the founder of the American Civil Liberties Union, uh, was a, a, just a vehement anti-Christian uh, zealot. He a uh, bigot. And uh, he said that communism was the goal. Uh, that was the goal of the ACLU. Now, communism, uh, uh, at the central goal of communism is to do away with, uh, with uh, all religion, particularly Christianity. And you'll note that the ACLU, uh, rarely do they have hostility toward in fact they'll you know jump right in to help uh, a radical muslim group or something that is being you know discriminated against so called uh, but it's really particularly christianity that uh, they're hostile to and so, so Matt, what can be done to rein in groups like the ACLU what can be done to educate the public and to put a stop to this kind of nonsense well, one thing that can be done is we've got a new Congress in Washington, D.C., and back in 2006, I testified before the House and the Senate on the Public Expression of Religion Act, and it passed the House. It got to the Senate in the uh, September of 2006, but the Senate didn't take it up, and we had the election in 2006, and a number of Republicans lost in 2006, so we lost some of that majority. Now, however, since there's such a large majority in the House, the House will be taking that particular bill up again. In fact, that's one of the things on the agenda. And that actually says that if the ACLU files lawsuits on these public expressions of religion, such as the Ten Commandments, the Nativity Scenes, these Establishment Clause cases where you have a public expression of religion, the Pledge of Allegiance with One Nation Under God, In God We Trust, those kinds of things, they can't get attorney's fees. Uh, because that attorney's fee is a federal statute that says if you file suits for civil rights, you can get attorney's fees against the government if you win. It also allows the ACLU to do that in these Establishment Clause cases. So we ought to first defund them, uh, and then these governmental entities, when we come in and say we will defend you at no cost, it's a no-brainer for them because even if they were to lose, they don't have to pay the ACLU. The ACLU has to finance its own way rather than have public dollars finance their lawsuits. And we will come in pro bono and defend uh, these uh, municipalities and government agencies and school boards and so forth. So really, it is a win-win situation for the school boards and, and, and for government entities uh, to push back and to stand up to these bullies with the ACLU. And it would be great to see the ACLU start bleeding uh, funds because, uh, Matt, as, as we know, when we go up Liberty Council against the ACLU, we win 92-plus percent of the time. So they're going to lose tremendous amounts of money if this legislation is passed. I hope that it is. Well, I think the people in Hawaii ought to literally stand up. We ought to pray for Hawaii as well, that this cancer doesn't uh, spread through the other 49 states, but it needs to be reversed in Hawaii and not allowed in these other states. Obviously, the ACLU will not stop with Hawaii. They're going to try to target other states. As we already said, they tried to stop Indiana. Uh, we were part of that lawsuit by filing an amicus brief, and the court rejected the ACLU's claim. But the ACLU is going to continue to push this issue. And I think, you know, if we boot God out of our foundation, which is what the ACLU is trying to do, will have consequences. The founders believed, and George Washington said clearly, that our cons or that uh, the twin pillars of America are religion and morality. John Adams said our constitution is made only for a moral and religious people. It's wholly inadequate to the government of any other. Give us a call today at Liberty Council to help support this ministry as we advance religious freedom, the sanctity of life, and family. You can visit our website at lc.org. Sign up for our Liberty Alert email and also our Grassroots Action email there as well. You can also call 1-800-671-1776 to support Liberty Council with a tax-deductible contribution. You can ask for the book, 
Original Intent by David Barton. It's a great book that talks about the original intent of our founders. It's a fascinating book that you'll want to read for a contribution of $15. We'll send it to you right away. And also the book, The New England Primer, for a contribution of $7. That book was used in American public schools up through the early 1900s. And then we also have our first publication from our new revolution publishers called The Patriot's Handbook on Religious or on American Liberty. The Patriot's Handbook on American Liberty. It contains the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence and other documents as well. Call us today or go to lc.org. You have been listening to Matt Staver of Liberty Council. Our hope is to encourage and inspire you to stand up for your faith, family, and freedoms. We can accomplish a lot when we work together. Get informed and get involved today. Sign up for our free monthly newsletter, The Liberator. We will send it out to you free of charge. Stay informed with our Liberty Alert email update. Just click on the website at www.lc.org or call us at 1-800-671-1776. Tune in next time to learn more about your rights right here on Faith and Freedom. 